What it do, comic babies. I'm Bunkmaster B, and today is October. Which means we're talking about some spooky books. And I swear I'm going to do everything in my power not to open every video with, Blah! It's me, Spookmaster V! That's, that's the only one you get. That one was for me. I'm sorry you had to hear that. So, it's spooky month. Everybody's talking about them spooky books, and I'm not really a big horror guy in general. I'm not. I'm not a big slasher guy. I'm not anything like that. My favorite kind of things along that genre tend to be a little bit more sort of about cultivating a really spooky environment, like atmospheric horror. Like one of my absolute favorites that I always point to is the original Alien very claustrophobic uh, sense, being stuck on the ship, not having all of the information about what you're there with. I think that's great. And that tends to be the, the kind of horror and spooky books that I tend to gravitate to. So over the next month, we're going to look at some books that are maybe not necessarily the, the most traditional horror, but are some of my favorites of the genre. And we are kicking it off with the first horror comic I ever read, and one that I adore and I'd probably say is still my absolute favorite of the genre right now. And that is Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, and Dave Stewart on colors. This book I found at a time that I wasn't really in comics. I'd been sort of around it, but I was living out in Denver at the time and living in a really small apartment, and I didn't really have space for a physical collection. And I remember near the end of my time in Denver, um, it's a bad time to do this, but um, we had like a lot of our stuff packed up, uh, living out of boxes, didn't have like a ton with me. And I was just like, you know what, I want to go to a comic shop, and I want to just pick up some books that I don't know anything about. And I asked the owner, hey, what's good right now? This was one of the titles that he pointed to. So glad he did. And I want to talk to you about why I think this is one of the most important horror books that has come out within the last few years. Let's check it out. All right, so Gideon Falls. Like I said, this was probably my first horror series that I ever read. And it's one to this day that is part of my monthly reading. So Gideon Falls tells the story of two men that we don't immediately understand how they're linked. So we start out here with this man rummaging through trash uh, believe it or not, this was actually published pre-COVID. So the idea is that this was a, a weird sight to uh, see at the time. And we don't quite understand why this man is uh, rummaging through trash, but we see what he finds. And when he finds it, we get this dark red background. Oh. This is Norton Sinclair. We go back to Norton's apartment. The use of inks and the sort of scratchy look that Sorrentino gives, it just really, for me, what make this series. There's so much that is excellent about this, and the, the imagery is so creepy, but again, just if we look, just look at this See how this isn't a solid black fill. See how there's parts of it Mitch, that's giving everything this really scratchy look. The entire series is like that. So this man we find out is Norton Sinclair. And we see that he's cataloged many such pieces as the one that he found in the trash earlier in the issue. And that's it. It's all we get of him at the beginning. We flash out to 
the other character that we begin the book with. And this is a man of God. A man of God who's lost his way, it seems. We see as he's driving out through these cornfields, he gets a glimpse of some farm country. We see an old barn, we see a windmill, and he is drinking while he is driving. Don't do that. Do not drink and drive, but kind of illustrates the place that he's in, in this sort of backwoods farm town that he's going to, in a place that he doesn't really think he belongs in. Sees one of the locals here and just gives that smile, that creepy, creepy smile. Father Wilfred goes by Father Fred, meets one of the parishioners, she shows him around this sort of small town of Gideon Falls and we flash back to our first character Norton Sinclair who we see is in therapy Um, as you might imagine from a man who is scrounging around in the trash and cataloging them Norton is mentally unwell and he is in mandated therapy and he's going through that and you know, as is the case in, in a horror uh, book like this, he may be more sane than uh, he is led to believe. He's got very clearly some compulsions here, but there's something to them. And we get to see back and forth strange things happening. So this is the previous uh, father of the town, the previous priest who was sent there, who was dead. Father Tom is showing up in the middle of the night in Father Fred's room, and he's running out through this field and thinks it's a dream, but we see some boot prints. And we get this sort of flipped iconography of the two characters. We don't know yet how they're connected but we see the black barn we see this up we see it's reflected and that sweet parishioner we saw at the beginning father tom running through well he led her to this woman being murdered with her own artificial hand uh, stuck through her chest So, very clearly, not all is as it seems in the town of Gideon Falls. And just as it keeps going, we find out further and further on each side, sort of a little bit more and more about what's happening. In the case of Norton, we get more one-on-one time with his psychologist, where he believes the trash that he uh, he is accumulating are pieces of the Black Barn. Father Fred saw a Black Barn on the day that he saw the woman murdered and was following a dead priest. But uh, turns out that kind of testimony doesn't really hold up in court. And it's this sense of unknowing, this uneasy sense of dread from both of these sides that there is more than we know going on in this brilliant use of very muted tones interspersed with some big hits of bright crimson red that really really do well kind of set the tone you can see most of it kind of this muted hotel lobby kind of thing where you get a lot of beiges a lot of creams kind of a a pea green right there a lot of uh a lot of grays So when we get those moments of a red or something like that, it really, really pops and brings that forward. And again, all throughout it, we get that sort of scratchy line ink work. I'm not going to say really anything more than that, because so much of this book is the mystery that's here. But this is one I read every year, and there's a reason for it. I really think 
you guys should do the same. So that's it. That's Gideon Falls. Like I said at the beginning, the horror I tend to go for tends to be atmospheric. It tends to be very tense. It, you know, it. I would say it tends to be quite spooky. And I think that's what especially this first volume of Gideon Falls does. The rest of the series goes in sort of a different direction. Gets ends up being a lot more about sort of the nature of the universe and reality and, and you know, things of that nature. But here, I think there's just such a tense environment. And it's one of those situations where you're sort of brought into this world and you're learning the rules along with the characters. I think it's excellent. This is one of those ones that I go back to every October. I read it with the lights dimmed, I put on a little bit of spooky music, and I just let those hairs uh, start standing up. But that's me. Have you guys read this one? I know this one's a little divisive. I've seen some people say Gideon Falls is super, super boring. I've seen some people refer to it as a really slow burn, which actually I would disagree with. I think my favorite part of the series is the stuff that happens early on. The rest of it's still great, but it takes a very different direction and it goes in sort of more cosmic direction, whereas this is more grounded but more mysterious. So if you've read it, are you like me? Are you like not like me? I mean, talk to me. How are you like? So let me know down in the comments below what uh, what your experience with this. And also let me know some of your favorite horror reads. Like I said, for the rest of the month, we're going to be talking about some of those. And hey, maybe, uh, maybe your favorite will be coming up soon. But until then, I've been Bunkmaster B. You all have been amazing. I'll catch you next time.